hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to have some fun with the old Mac Pro 2008 here. First of all we're going to go with the stock configuration here. At the moment uh, I was just launching CSGO so we could verify that our MSI afterburner was working properly. Alright, so we're in the infamous benchmark map here. Let's get to it. And there we go. Just keeping an eye on the counters. Frame rate at the moment is not too bad. We're using about 5 gigs of RAM. Video memory is at about 800 megabytes. GPU usage is at 60%. Oh, no, that's at 40%, 61 degrees. CSGO is typically a very CPU limited game. In this case, I think very GPU limited because when it really dipped down in terms of frame rate, it really hit about 90% usage. Oh, we have one core that's hitting 80% more or less, CPU core 1. I guess you could really say the FPS are all over the place. Right, so that was the benchmark map. Let's try a more real way of uh, playing. Let's go for Deathmatch on Dust 2. It's as good as anything. Shouldn't be too difficult to find a match there. Uh, get our bearings in game so we can actually comment on things like proper stutter or whatever. All right, match it ready. This thing probably takes so long to load, the game will be over by the time we actually log in due to this very, very slow WD green power hard drive. But hey, it was free. Watch me get shit on. Jesus, what's my mouse doing? Holy pulse. It aimed straight down when I was actually aiming left. My god. Definitely had better frame rates though, that is for sure. Something. That's unexpected. Wow. That was an interesting off shot. That's a terrible spawn. That's a terrible spawn. Kill all the chickens. Yeah, I got it. That's as good as anything. All right. Let's move on to the next title, shall we? All right, next game on the list is GTA 4. Let's take a look at the graphics here. I'm running very high settings again at 1920 by 1080. Maxed out the settings as far as they could go with our one gigabyte of RAM, uh, VRAM limit. First of all, let's do the benchmark test like we did with CSGO. And uh, see what the experience is like when we're actually in game. Because we've seen that there is a bit of a difference. We just saw a couple of cores hit 90%. Or well, one of them. G4 
GP was at 65 to 70 percent. Fairway is pretty good though. It's pretty consistent, in fact. Alright, test is over. Got almost 50 FPS average. That's actually not bad for GTA 4. I remember playing this on my Mac Pro and I had a 7950 and I could, couldn't even get to 60 FPS at all. This isn't all that far off. Right, so this is actual, actual in-game performance. It's definitely a bit laggier. There we go, got run over. Just GTA things. Interesting to see that the GPU usage is now actually a bit higher than it was before. There aren't any CPU cores being stressed all that much. Sometimes one will hit about 80%, but that's not enough to make the frame rate tank. This game just runs this crappily in general. for copyright reasons. There we go. Oh, he was eaten by his own hood. I bet that's never happened before. Well, that was super effective. Quickest way to get out of the car is through the windshield. Who knew? And welcome to Mafia 2, the definitive edition. Okay, this was released this year. Basically just a souped up version of the original Mafia 2 from I believe 2010. It was one of the earliest DirectX 11 games and it also supported physics. Or physx, whatever. Okay, let's set it to high settings. We'll disable anisotropic filtering because this GPU will not be able to handle it anyway. Of course we need to turn physx off because AMD cards cannot do that. Or I guess this card would still classify as being an ATI card. Set A to FXAA, MSA off. Everything else can stay on. No frame rate limiter. Also, fun fact, this game actually, when you start it up, says that this computer is below the minimum requirements. It's not below the minimum requirements for the original Mafia 2, funny enough. First of all, let's go through the benchmark procedure. There it goes. Averaging 27 FPS here. This is definitely a GPU bottleneck. GPU is at over 90%. CPU cores are 30% or lower. Also appears to only use the first physical CPU, the second one does not appear to be doing anything. Which is not all that uh, uncommon. CPU is sitting at a cool 54 degrees C, GPU is way over 70 at the moment. Definitely a GPU bottleneck here. We'll see how much it tanks when it gets to the hardest part of this benchmark. With this, when this distiller is actually on fire. I will say I respect this little graphics card. It's, uh, it's giving it the best shot. It is starting to artifact a little bit. This was an eBay card after all, so... Yep, there it goes. That's not healthy. Let's kill it right there. Oh, we can't actually load the gameplay that I already had. Okay. 
I guess we'll just go for a uh, additional content campaign here for what was previously known as DLC. So we can get an idea for the actually actual in-game performance. I honestly don't care much for cutscenes. Let's go. Put our coat on. So at least when we're inside, we get about 30 FPS and some pretty badass flickering. It's interesting to see that when this card gets over 70 degrees, it starts doing this. Well, actually, I've only seen it actually happen in this game. Let's take Lincoln Clay's car here. Whoops, alright, almost rolled out there, this is responding very weirdly because of the skips in the frame rate and all those glitches. Still, frame rate is not too bad. There we go. That's super effective. All right, let's quit out of that one. And let it cool down for a little bit. Okay, once again, we're in Mafia 2. This is the original game. I have to lock the fan speed a little bit higher than it was before. So it can now run a bit cooler. Once again, we're gonna run a little bit of the benchmark and then we'll go straight to gameplay just to see what the difference is between the latest version of the game with all the new fancy textures and all that and the original well it should be apparent straight away that now we're running around 60 fps with the same or similar settings with high details what's also funny is that when you run the definitive edition at lowest details possible it looks more or less the same as the original at very high settings but yeah i think it's pretty obvious here that it's running pretty well let's once again go for joe's adventures here so we can get a better apples to apples pun intended comparison GPU temperature really didn't go up all that much either, so that's interesting to see. All right, skip the cutscene. Uh, that's that's about right. This can do about the same speeds. Whoops! Ah, already got the cops on us. Accident. Oh, we're actually shooting at. That's suboptimal. Oh, crap. The physics in this game are a lot better than in GTA in many regards. You can no longer just run over a pole all that easily. Alright. Put the pedal to the metal. See what this car can do. It can go pretty quick. Whoops. Yeah, just some collateral damage. Well, yeah, this is definitely a lot more enjoyable than uh, with the definitive edition for sure. That does look a hell of a lot better than this does for sure. But at a trade-off of way less frame rate, like way over 50% less. Yeah. Not sure about that. Okay, here are the settings that I've set. 
We're going for a 900p resolution. High details. Because the game literally won't let me set to 1080p anyway. And I guess that's for good reason. Let's see if we have cloud saves. We do not. Okay. I guess we'll go for a new game. Oh, right. First time around, you actually have to sit through this. I'm not going to make you watch this. Alright. 900p high details, hovering around 50 FPS at the moment. Feels good. Not doing too bad. Actually, surprising how well this runs. Really didn't expect this. Let's see if we can find some Koreans. Whoops, that was the wrong freaking button. Jeez. This mouse is terrible. Should get another one. I don't want to go down. Yep, we're running at 60 FPS actually. Interesting. I'm going to move through a little bit so we can actually see some daylight in the game and see what a frame rate is then. And the graphics, of course, because we're running glorious DirectX 10 mode. None of that DirectX 9 XP bullshit. So, uh, yeah, this should be a good moment. Let's watch the KPA get away. Anyway, now he's down. Good. Now we're actually in an area that has some activity. Frame rate has gone down a little bit to about 40 FPS. A look at them graphics though, in DirectX 10 mode. It's definitely a bit prettier than the DX9 for sure. Gotta love it. Price is still a PC melter. Because the uh, remastered version is actually crap looking. I'm just still running the original here. Anyway, I guess that basically covers Crisis. Yes, it actually runs Crisis. So, let's turn everything way up as far as it will go. Apparently that's 1680 by 1050. We're not going to run anti aliasing because that's unrealistic. We'll go with very high details, no motion blur. Wait for it to kill itself. I was almost thinking like, and it happens. Okay, this is apparently very high details. Oh wow, yeah. It is making a difference here on the water for sure. Resolution is a bit off though, because so that's looking a bit weird, but it's still not running that bad. And that shadow though. Huh. Let's just admire that view for a bit. Ain't it pretty? It's running remarkably well, I gotta say on these old 2.8 gigahertz Xeons. He's not even using a hell of a lot of cores here anyway. It's all GPU muscle. Right, so the last thing that I really want to show just as a uh, guided tour, so to speak, is the CPU melter that is City Skylines. And uh, I'm not expecting good results here. I have a city set up. It's about, I think it has about 80,000 citizens in there. It's reasonably large, so let's see it try and crap itself. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna bet your ass it will. Even the menu is hard to load. 
Let's see, that's a small town. Oh, this is a big one. 111,000. All right. Go broke or go home. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at the main road here. Fourteen FPS. Oh yeah. It's actually not the main road, I don't think. Nope. This used to be it. Alright, I replaced the main road with actual highway. Alright. That's good enough, I guess. You know, when you zoom out, it's actually almost playable at 17 FPS. Once you zoom in, it's just it's a complete crapshoot. 10 FPS, almost single digit frame rates. <laughs> Alright, so in this city, that's actually quite small and perky and all that jazz. Alright. He was running in high details again, so. Eh, still about 15 FPS with over 10 gigabytes of memory usage. So, I'm going to say that we're somewhat. Yeah, okay, we're both uh, VRAM and CPU limited. One core is at almost 90%, 94. So one core is almost getting pegged, and the VRAM is just completely used up. Even in a small town like this, where you can still, when you zoom out, almost hit 30 FPS. Once you zoom in, it's gone though, about 15, 15 to 20. This is definitely a PC melter for, the, for these older CPUs, for sure, and this old graphics card as well. So yeah, I guess this concludes our guided tour of the benchmarks. I will add some benchmarks after this uh, clip here, just to get a comparison done and get some synthetics in as well. Because I think synthetics are just too boring to do live, so I'm just going to uh, Put in a couple screenshots from like 3D Mark and Geekbench so you can get a general idea of the general performance of the system. And um, I will try to get a other graphics card in here. I'm curious for a couple of things, mostly because um, that's where we saw the biggest uses: City Skylines and uh, Mafia 2 Remastered or Definitive Edition, it's called. And. Uh, try to run those with the 5700 XT from my main rig and see how much of a difference that makes at which point we actually do become completely CPU bottlenecked. Well we know City Skyline is for sure a CPU bottleneck but I just want to remove the VRAM bottleneck as well. So uh, we'll go from there. Well we're taking a look at the benchmarks here I just want to address a little thing here. I wasn't able to actually run a faster graphics card in this Mac Pro because uh, I need an 8-pin power connector which I did not have. So uh, we'll put that uh, away for now and get back to that in another video where we'll upgrade the graphics to a faster card and then we'll uh, revisit some of these benchmarks. For the time being, here are the results. As you can see, we get a 2584 multi-core score in Geekbench 5 and our Firestrike score is just under 2900. Physics score is reasonably good for these old CPUs but the graphics is definitely holding the system back, so uh, stay tuned for a faster graphics card and some more fun with the Mac Pro. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.